schedule for Monday, April 15th, 2019. Our invocation this evening will be offered by Shirley Murdoch, Church of Christ, Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our dear Father in heaven, we are meeting together tonight in the attitude of a city council meeting and rejoice in the machinations of a democracy that gives us the privilege as citizens to meet with our leaders of government and be involved in the decision-making process. Our dear Father, we ask thee guidance and direction this night as the issue of the MIA, it, AMI is considered that all things might, that we might have thy guidance and direction and things will be conducted in a timely and orderly manner and issues can be resolved. We also ask thee to watch over all of the citizens of Independence. We're grateful we've been spared from tornadoes, tornadoes and other destructive storms and pray for those that are caught in them and have lost everything they have and we wish to count our blessings we love thee and ask these things in the name of jesus christ amen i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all Madam State Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Members Huff? Here. Perkins? Here. Doherty? Here. DeLucy? Present. Robertson? Here. Van Camp? Here. Mayor Ware? Here. Um, our, we will begin this evening with citizens' requests to speak. Um, we had five citizens sign up in advance and several who have signed up this evening, so we will take these in order. Um, the City Clerk will Keep time up here at the dais and let you know when you have one minute remaining. Um, I presume all of you have been informed of the council rules of procedure in addressing um, the city council. So we will begin with Brenda J. Perry, who wishes to speak to the city council regarding the approval of AMI. Ms. Perry. Yes, I know this flip-flop looks foolish, but it symbolizes the sudden without notice reversal of the smart meter voter by some of you was very foolish indeed. You unwittingly woke a sleeping giant that's mad as you know what about this and a lot of other things. The word this is a flip-flop council is spreading. People in Branson have heard about it. You say it's legal to change the vote, but it sure was a sneaky thing to do to decent people who thought this whole long ordeal was over with. Harry Truman would be embarrassed by this mean and nasty act. A very, very, very large segment of people don't want smart meters and don't believe the mantra they'll save money. It's not just a few againers either that's unhappy with technology and, and so-called progress. Also, we don't care when you compare us to Kansas City and other cities who have them. Quit worrying about keeping up with the Joneses. It would be more practical to have spent the half a million dollars on all the studies plus the over $50 million for the total project to concentrate on generating more electric capacity. I know people with other utility services who hate having smart meters. They had no say in the matter. You're on the council because at some point people had some hope and trust in you, but mostly no more. You act like you're beneath us. We've groveled at your feet long enough. By flipping the results of the vote, you flop politically. Our next speaker is Randy Vaught, who wishes to speak to the city council regarding the timely, timeliness of utility bills. Mr. Vaught, you're here this evening. Okay, uh, John Miles wishes to speak to the council regarding smart meters. Mr. Miles. Good evening. Um, as an old Eagle Scout and an Army vet, uh, the invocation and the pledge were very refreshing. I appreciate that. 
first time I've seen that sign, and it is awesome. Independence is a great American story, which brings me to my point. Uh, grew up in uh, Raytown in Kansas City. Uh, built houses with my uncle when I was a teenager in Castle Woods. Lived in Independence for a year before joining the military, uh, the Army, in the oxymoron, military intelligence, two words that belong nowhere near each other. Uh, lived and worked all over the country and all over the globe. I spent 23 and a half years in the San Francisco Bay Area, which brings me to my point. I have lived this smart meter transition firsthand. They do not deliver what they promise. PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric, forced the meters on us with no public voice. And a few months after they were installed, everybody saw a big spike in their electric bill. We were told, well, now the meters are just doing their job more accurately than the old meters. Shortly after that, we found out, no, they weren't. The smart meters were wrong. What they did is they had to develop additional layers of bureaucracy at greater cost, special committees, and more profoundly to me, we're, I, I believe we're being held hostage in that unless we agree to give up some of our constitutional rights, specifically privacy, and unless we agree that we're going to let, we're going to voluntarily give the electric company power to come in and start shutting our power down during peak demand days, that we're either going to have to give that up or live without electricity, which is not a choice in this modern world today. Uh, I just recently became aware of this situation. My wife, who is my diligent admin, brought the situation to my attention. We got involved in it, and I was particularly disturbed in the land of Truman. Uh, we were so blessed to be able to come back to this rich, wholesome land where our values were respected and learn that, that the vote was brought up in such a way it was voted down, and then at, uh, sometime later, and feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but it was my understanding, I think I've got it right then with the, the flip-flops, is that when the item was not on the agenda and the meetings were very poorly attended, there was quote unquote secret vote and then it was overturned. That is not the way that government in the land that I grew up in used to be conducted. And, and I'm very, I have to say I'm ashamed uh, at, at the behavior of that and, and I'm, I'm sorry if that sounds tough, but you got a vote that you didn't like, and then I believe that you went behind our backs to, to make that a vote that you did like. Our country's in tough times right now because of a situation exactly like that. People didn't like a vote. They're doing everything they can to change that vote, and we're seeing the, the, the problems of that. So uh, I appreciate your attention. I can tell you firsthand these smart meters do not work. Your bills will go up. Government will increase and the bureaucracy will be increased accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nathan Gordon, who requests the council regarding AMI. Mr. Gordon. <clears throat> um, first of all, I just want to Thank you for letting me speak. This is my aunt who is from Harrisonville who has had smart meters put in and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a story in speaking of personal experience. In March of 2017, a smart meter was installed in my aunt's house. She started having dizzy spells and falling in chronic pain and feeling like she was being burned from the inside out. She had bruising all over her body with no apparent reason. Her heart was doing flip-flops as well as as palpitations. She also had two episodes of feeling like she was having a heart attack, one for two minutes and another for five minutes. All this continued two for four months. At four months, um, she was admitted to the hospital with only 25% of her blood. She was bleeding out internally. After being released from the hospital, she continued to have all the same issues. When my cousin, her son, came over to check on her, he picked her up and to stay at her at his house due to the smart meters emf it was admitting and destroying her health during all this time letters were sent to the utilities and city and state officials from her doctors nothing was done six months later her home was put on the market at six months her hip shoulder elbow and, and all her joints were literally disintegrated to splinter some of them all this due to the installation of smart meters Across the United States, health risks have been linked to smart meters, radiation, including but not limited to our cancer, 
damage to the nervous system, adverse reproductive effects, DNA damage, blood disorders, many more. Doctors are calling for a recall of smart meters across the United States. Our health is not the only issue with smart meters. With a non-consenting wiretap to gather our information to sell for a profit, as well as being able to control our appliances, the company at a company's will. Now, with the, the that suspicious vote, after being voted down, the council is forcing Independence residents to pay for smart meters for more than $50 million, a rate increase of 25 to 65 percent of our bills. From 2015 and 16, our bill at my home, which I grew up in, was $250. The last two years, it's been now over $600 during the summer. Smart meters could push this bill to $900. My mom still lives with us, who's 80 years old. We will be forced to move, including my family, especially these people on fixed incomes. You know, what are we going to do about them? Any of these issues, from the health risks, spying on our residents for their personal information, or charging residents over $50 million to raise their bills by 25 to 65 percent, forcing them to move, should keep smart meters from being approved or installed. We the people have informed this council of the health risks, dangers, and unjust car costs of smart meters. Just as God teaches in the Bible, and my father taught me, once you know the truth, you are responsible for it. This council will be held accountable for the decisions that they make. Not just by us, but by God, and you need to remember that. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate it. Our next speaker is Ellie Zaror, who requests to speak to the council regarding AMI. Ellie? Okay. Uh, our next speaker is Kenneth Love, who requests to speak to the Council on the subject of committees and boards. Mr. Love. Good evening. First of all, thank everyone that has served our country. Thank you all for your service. I'd like to first. Mr. Love, would you please come up to the podium? I'd, I'd like to start out by saying finally the city has gotten the landlord tenant complaint pamphlet 100%. The way it should be for landlords to give to registered tenants. The problem now is you have a man doing a job. Wait a minute. What is his job? And I'm talking Perry Hill. He's got three jobs, four jobs. How many jobs does he do for the city? Um, Mr. Code Love, compliance? you signed up to speak on committees and boards. Okay. Can you please oh, I'm stick sorry. to that subject? I'm sorry. I Thank you. I'm sorry. Anyway, talking about the communities and what she's saying is, look at the people that are in here. I don't see anybody here getting the opportunity to sign up to be on a committee. I don't see any study programs going on where y'all mentioned that we're looking for people to be on your committees, meaning, let's see, you got people from Raytown, you got people from Odessa, you got people from Oak Grove, you got people from Kansas City, you got people from Independence. I think there's many people here that qualify for, they're all registered voters. They're all citizens of independence. And I think each councilman has somebody in here tonight that lives in their district. Maybe somebody that is interested in signing up. I can understand that you don't want to sign up because you might get flip-flopped. Thank you. Our next big speaker is Denise Wiss, is that correct? Who um, would like to speak to the council on answering my questions on smart meters by your vote and independence logo. Ma'am, um, you're limited to one subject. Um, okay. Do you wish to speak? We'll just go with the smart meters. Okay, very good. Okay. And you'll have three minutes. Right. Uh, my question to the council one week before you did this vote to uh, approve smart meters was, if you knew the radiation from these meters would 
give at least one children in the city of Independence, one child, cancer, would you do it? Your answer was yes. I talked to a council member about my concern of the fire of these meters. Uh, they told me, yes, they were concerned too. The houses in their district were old. Uh, they were concerned about the fire. I'm going, yes. Then they continued to say, but we're going to put them in because they're going to save us all these meter readers' job. The question is, if it causes a fire, would you put it in? Your yes vote spoke a lot. The third thing has uh, already been touched on, uh, the smart meters raising the bill. You said it's because the meters have been incorrect and we've not been paying enough. I think it's because we're paying for the meters. But you've got elderly and sick people in your district that can't pay for food and medicine at the same time. And now you're going to unduly burden them with this light meter. Harry Truman wouldn't do it. Um, our next speaker is Ed Paserno. Paserno. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Paserno, you had indicated two topics. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. I came across these AMI meters a long time ago before they even became, I couldn't believe at that time what these things did. Number one, it is a total constitutional violation of the Fourth Amendment. And I'll tell you, I signed up, when I signed up, I, I made a vow, I took an oath to defend the Constitution of the United States, period. It wasn't for four years, it wasn't just while I was in the service. That's a lifelong commitment. And I will not stand by and watch these meters get shoved down people's throats. These things are known to cause cancer. And you cannot, with 100% certainty, tell me that they don't. But you don't care. You want to put them in there for some kind of backdoor deal because this is not an independence thing. This isn't a United States thing. This is a global issue. This is globalized. So there's something going on in the background that people don't know about. So uh, we're tired of it. We need government to sustain our country. But when we give up some of our rights, government is within a box. Okay, you step outside that box, it's the citizen's duty to put you back into that box. This secret meeting with these smart meters was totally, totally against the people of independence. Our next speaker is Daisy Reinhardt, who wishes to speak on smart meters. Ms. Reinhardt. Good evening. Good evening. Um, another concern of mine about installing smart meters is Independence has a lot of older homes and a lot of historical homes, and the wiring in these older homes aren't compatible with the smart meters, causing sparks inside of the plastic covers that get too hot and have caused a lot of house fires across the country. It's to my understanding that a lot of insurance companies are going to have it in their clause that house fires caused by smart meters will not be covered. There's just too much proven negativity about smart meters, at least for the consumer, and it makes me wonder who actually is benefiting from them. Our next speaker is Debbie, Deborah Pixler, who wishes to speak on transparency of governor, government, Ms. Pixler. Council members, Madam Mayor, I feel like I'm stuck in the movie same time next year with yet another vote by city council without letting people know who was going to be affected by it that, so we could speak. This year it's AMI, last year it was rezoning of GIA, the year before that it was the landlords. It seems to be a status quo for the certain members of this council to be less than transparent. Well, you've pushed it too far this time. You have not just upset a small group that you can ignore. This time you've affected everyone who calls independence home. In the last week, I've had the privilege to talk to many of my neighbors from every corner of independence. And the one thing I've heard over and over again, this is our city, not theirs to destroy. The blinders are off. 
We thought we had a council that had our best interest at heart. Now we know better. The citizens of Independence found our voice and we plan on using it. We will never lose it again. We will do what, it need, what needs to be do, done to make Independence great again. We the people are taking our city back. Thank you. Our next speaker is Erin Talcott, who wishes to speak on AMI. Ms. Talcott, you'll have three minutes. Thank you for this opportunity to let you know what your vote to pass AMI on April 1st means. By voting for smart meters, you are saying it is perfectly fine for someone else to take control of the temperature inside of my home against my will. Your vote for smart meters says you don't care if my home catches fire. Your vote for smart meters says you don't care about my privacy. You don't care that my activities will be monitored inside my home. You don't care that my data could be sold without my knowledge or consent or that that data may be used against me to force me to pay higher rates during peak usage times. Your yes vote says you don't care that you are forcing me and my family to be exposed to EMR emissions that I am not currently exposed to and would not choose to be exposed to and have no way to protect myself from this added exposure. Your yes vote says you don't care that I won't be able to use my patio anymore as that is right where my smart meter will be located. It would be like relaxing on my lounge chair with an iced tea in front of an open running micro microwave. Your yes vote says you don't care how the higher bills will affect me or my family. Your yes vote says you don't care that I may be saddled with the cost of upgrading my electrical wiring to accommodate your smart meter that I don't want. Your yes vote says you don't care that I may have to replace damaged electronics, appliances, and electrical wiring from the brown downs and remote shutoffs that come with AMI. Your vote for AMI means you don't care that you have more than canceled out the 2% rate decrease you recently passed. Your yes vote says you were never serious about giving us a fair, non-punitive analog opt-out. You knew when you voted that Corrin, Maine did not offer one. I understand that what is being looked at now is KCPNL's opt-out program, one of the highest in the nation, a $150 initial fee plus $45 a month on top of our higher bills, and we'll still be stuck with smart meters on all of our homes. One minute, Ms. Talcott. And what is more concerning than all of these things is that your vote for AMI says that you don't care for what is fair, for what is right, and what is ethical. The way this AMI, AMI vote was taken was underhanded, deceptive, and undemocratic. Your vote for smart meters means you greatly underestimated the numbers of people in this city that don't want them. In your zeal to approve AMI, you forgot the few of us that were here fighting this fight the last couple of years represented many. The good news in all of this, I have never seen this city come together like they have on this issue. I cannot tell you how proud I am of the, of the residents and how they have rallied the last two weeks. Your yes vote for AMI means you have awakened a sleeping giant and we are here to take our city back. Our next speaker is Janissa Moore who requests to speak on AMI. Ms. Moore. Hello. Good. I want to say hello to the community. Uh, my name is Janice Moore, State Auditor. Um, I'm fairly new to the community, um, so I'll just do a little bit of reinforcement. What I don't understand is if you're putting in these smart meters and we're supposed to be building the independence community, where are the jobs going when the smart meters come in? And then also as well, with the 25 to, I guess, 60 percent increase, how is one supposed to live? Now, I'm on a fixed income and I work for the state government. That doesn't include these individuals who don't work and don't have insurance and things like that and on a fixed income that's less than mine. And I have a budget and I can barely afford the things I have currently. So with that in mind, why are you guys treating us like third rate citizens in our own community? Speaker is Wendy Yan, who wishes to speak on Blue Valley Power Plant closure and purchase power agreements. Um, 
Yes, I hadn't. Um, I saw that on the agenda on Friday um, that you were going to talk a public hearing on the Blue Valley um, power plant closure. And I was wondering, um, recently the city council uh, hired a $100,000 consultant to report on um, the effectiveness of the turbines that are currently working, and you haven't heard a report back on that at the city meeting. And there's some other issues that were involved with the, because um, it che is cheaper to generate our own energy. And um, I understand that the future usage and those things that are, um, um, that um, make you, would make you want to close the, um, the power plant hasn't been effectively talked about. You haven't talked about why the energy would be so, um, why the, plant is underperforming, um, future usage, you know, the as of the city of Independence is going to continue to grow with the uh, um, advent of, of um, more energy efficient appliances and people even going off the grid itself, why we'd have to go ahead and purchase additional uh, energy from other companies. Um, it just seems like it's really premature for you to be making a decision on um, closing Blue Valley when you haven't really addressed all the issues involved. Thank you. Oh, I saw that um, that this is at, you added a, a same thing about the Oneida pur um, purchase power agreement for the um, megawatts capacity. This wasn't. This is like in violation of the Sunshine Law, which I think the people are talking about mostly with AMI. This wasn't on the um, agenda that was on uh, issued on Friday. Thank you. All right, our next speaker is April Sack, who wishes to speak on smart meters. Ms. Sack. Thank you, Council and Madam Mayor, for letting me speak. Um, I just want to start off saying that I'm a constituent from the second district. And I just wanted to address the issue of the smart meters and the concerns that I have come across in the constituency and independence that need to kind of be addressed. This past week, I have been going to fellow independence constituents' houses at their request to get more information about the smart meters and to sign the petition if they so choose. Now, I've come across quite a few issues that they've asked me questions. I can't answer them. They've opened up to me quite a bit. Some of the questions that they've asked have been, why are they develop, redeveloping areas that are already developed instead of developing areas that have gone downhill or putting funding into the generation facilities for electric? Why do we need smart meters if we don't have the generation capacity to offset the cost? Now, I have also been asked, why are we being told we have to have them? Why didn't it get put to a vote for the general public? That's a lot of money for us to just say okay to? Do they not care about the fact that some of us are barely able to make the payments now? Do we have to choose between food or making the electric? A lot of the people that I went and talked to are low income, handicapped, shut-ins, people with serious medical issues that normally do absentee ballots or they have to have a caregiver take them to the um, elections board to vote. They're on a fixed income. They're trying to figure out why couldn't we vote? Why couldn't we say enough's enough? Why couldn't we say we don't need them? Can we work on getting better accessibility options? Why do we need AMI if it's going to hurt us even more? Now, I've also been asked, why aren't our verses being heard? Do they not care about us? Are they that out of touch that they think we can afford that? We don't know what they're doing. We never do. We can't make it to the council meetings. We can watch it, but we can't come up and speak. Now, I could only sadly stand there and say, I don't know. I don't have the answers that you need. But I'll ask. I'll see if they'll be addressed. One voice in a river doesn't make much difference. But when you have a roaring flood behind you, you might get the answers. Now, I would just like to leave you with this thought. And it's been asked to me of each person that I spoke to, why haven't we been allowed to vote on the spending of money that we do not have? There needs to be a cap on how much they can vote on to make us pay. Most of the people in our neighborhood will now have to decide, again, 
to pay the electric or buy food? How do we survive? How can they do this to us? It's not right how they don't take us and our situation into consideration. We all don't live on 39th Street. Thank you for your time and your consideration. Our next speaker is Jason White, who wishes to speak on AMI. Mr. White, you'll, you will have three minutes. My name is Jason White. I'm here with Indy Energy. We have been a proponent for AMI since the beginning. We've been providing us forums and conversation on energy issues for the last six years here in town. We're still in support of AMI. Quite frankly, it's not a matter of if it happens in town, it's more a matter of when. As other people have mentioned, it is very common. More than 50% of the nation now uses AMI, the entire region. There isn't a conflagration of fires in the region. I'm sorry for health issues, but you can't create a causal link between random health issues and the advent of technology. Yes, I can. Yes, and excuse me, Mayor. Excuse me. The issue has been studied by legitimate health care organizations. The Independence Board of Health spent a lot of time digging into the available medical science and literature. Re most recently, the Kansas Corporation Commission spent a whole bunch of time looking at the issues and couldn't find any, any scientific evidence. That's what you need to base your decisions upon. But you know, it's what's interesting here is people are not happy. Okay, I get it. We have a nice libertarian populist streak here in Independence. It keeps the world entertaining. That's why we voted down 911, not once, not twice, but it was the third time before we passed that here. We were a donut hole with the entire metropolitan area using that important public safety service. But we looked at pseudoscience to make decisions and let fear get away from us. You all have the answer to settle the fear that these people are expressing and honestly expressing and that's having an honest opt-out. We've advocated for that since the very beginning. We've looked, it's been a little while, it's been about a year, but there are good opt-out programs and there are bad opt-out programs. We're still here to advocate for an opt-out program that doesn't charge people and, and put, a, put a good time limit so people know you're not gonna turn it around anytime soon. But frankly, it's garbage that, we're, that people are, are scaring their neighbors with this cancer. It's garbage that they're out there telling people there's gonna be a massive rate increase. There's been no legitimate study or analysis of that. Every expert that's come before you has said this is a good idea, it's gonna create savings that lead to rate de reductions. 30 seconds. I don't know right. why, when I go to the doctor and the doctor says something I may not agree with, I can go get a second opinion, but I don't go down the street to the barber. I go to another doctor. You have had a litany of experts come before you, and none of them have said, causes cancer, opens up everything to the Russians, it's gonna burn your houses down. I have the oldest house in town, by the way. Part of it built in the 1830s. I got no problem with smart meters. I would encourage you to help my neighbors feel more comfortable by getting out a liberal opt-out program because I want to benefit from it. And I suspicion that 85% of this community is also, excuse me, Mayor, I've been respectful of everyone behind me. Excuse me, Mayor, I okay. have been respectful of everyone. Recess. Stay right there. First to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, point of information. Yes, Councilman. I wondered if, <clears throat> if I could ask the uh, city clerk or the city manager what it will cost the city if they get enough signatures to put um, this on the ballot, this item on the ballot. Uh, Council Member, um, we usually get a bill, a, a um, estimated bill, and then we'll get a real bill after the election. It honestly, it has varied from $60,000 when there was many, many items on the ballot. So this, this, the amount of an election is spread over many entities up to $160,000 when it's only our entity that has something on the ballot. Uh, if, if we're a single entity on a ballot, you're seeing anywhere between 150 and 200, just depending on the cost at the time the election board does. 
Okay. So we would be investing another one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars with the Jackson County Election Board. That's my estimation. Yeah. I can only give an estimation. Thank you. At this, point. Um, this the second point of information has to do with the opt out, and I wondered if the city manager could address that. I know we have discussed that. Several of us have discussed that off and on over the past months. Um, so would you be willing to, to talk right. about that for a minute? Sure. Um, direction was given by the council April 1st uh, in regard to the uh, affirmative vote for Corn Maine to also uh, develop a opt-out policy. Um, it was a year ago tomorrow night that the council initially rejected the corn main contract, which did include a discussion of opt out. Um, in that preceding year, um, we went back and looked, there's been about five or six different iterations of that written. Uh, my staff and I met this past Thursday morning um, and we have, uh, per the council's direction, uh, putting the finishing touches on an opt out for the council's, council's contemplation uh, that would really be what I would call a free and clear opt out. That, would remove some of the early iterations we uh, went back and looked at had oh, restrictions for things like delinquent accounts or number of name changes, uh, things of that nature. Um, we stripped all that back. Um, uh, we believe the council's intent with an opt out was to provide as few restrictions as possible so that if a customer does not wish to have uh, the technology installed on their home, the customer could contact utility billing uh, and make that wish known and um, uh, ensure that that were not the case. So um, wrapping that up, um, want to place that before the council uh, soon, but want to make sure that we've got our, um, the council, pardon me, the council sentiments uh, appropriately reflected and bring that. But again, to summarize, I, I would say that of all the versions we've worked on, this one really strips back and, and just makes it a simple choice of do you want it or not. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If Thank I you. may. Yes. Uh, the amount that it costs to have a vote is ridiculous. It doesn't matter. The people deserve a vote. <laughs> the manner in which this vote was brought about, technically legal, has placed a shadow over the matter and left a bad taste in the mouth of the people. We should always be viewed as doing what is right for the people, not for the city council. Let the people vote. I move to place this manner of implementing AMI on the August 2019 ballot. Second. <clears throat> I said second. Okay. Okay. Sorry. okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, so Madam you? Mayor, excuse me, I couldn't turn my microphone on. I'm going to abstain because everybody has a right to a notice and an opportunity to debate a subject. By again making a motion and again seconding a motion, in two minutes, we are taking an action that is beyond the rules, beyond the Constitution of the United States of America, the state of Missouri, and our city charter. I am going to abstain, and I strongly urge this council, if you wish the motion to be made, make a motion properly, which is on May 6. Madam Mayor. Further discussion? Yes. We have an item on our agenda tonight uh, that addresses some of the council bylaws. And this is one of those items that is, I believe, on the agenda tonight, um, the council rules and procedures. Uh, so it addresses the, the exact situation that they've talked about and that we've talked about. And now we have another item before us that is being asked for us to vote on immediately. And I am not comfortable doing that tonight. So I, I, would move, I would move that we uh, table this for at least two weeks. Is
motion? Is there a second? Motion fails for lack of a second. Is there any other further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? No. DeLucy? Abstain. Robertson? No. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? No. Fails. Motion fails. Okay, this takes us to our presentation resolution. Uh, Madam this Mayor. Is, oh. Yes. <laughs> this is a resolution recognizing Sheila Saxon, Executive Assistant in the State Council Office as the Employee of the Month for April 2019. Madam City Clerk. Whereas the City Employee Recognition Program recognizes outstanding performance by employees of the City of Independence, and whereas an employee committee selects the Employee of the Month for exhibiting the qualities and ideals that best represent public service, and whereas the Employee Recognition Committee has selected Sheila Saxon, Executive Assistant in the City Council Office, as the Employee of the Month for April 2019. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Independence as follows, that the City Council joins in recognizing Sheila Saxon as the City of Independence Employee of the Month for April 2019. Um, Ms. Saxon isn't able to be with us uh, tonight to receive this recognition. Um, I'm sure many of you who are here this evening have um, come in contact with Sheila. She is our council executive assistant and has been for more than 30 years. So many times if you as a citizen reach out to the council office, it's Sheila who responds to your call and I know in almost 100% of the cases resolves your issue or puts you in contact with the proper council member or city staff. So she's done an outstanding job of managing dozens of council members, uh, several city managers, um, and certainly uh, thousands, tens of thousands of citizens, maybe hundreds of thousands of citizens over the years. So I'm sorry she's not here, but she is truly deserving of this recognition this evening. Um, that takes us to our consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, we do need a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Okay, this takes us to our consent agenda. Madam Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem. I, I move to approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Madam Mayor. Any items any council member wishes pulled for separate consideration? Madam Mayor. Yes. Item one, item 19730. Any others? Okay, will you please call the roll on the consent agenda minus item number one and resolution 19730. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Council member DeLucy, item number one. Item number one, Madam Mayor, is um, a suggestion that this city enter into a contract with a certain company for retirement plan advisory services and in reviewing the material we received, I just noticed that there's a second group that is only a third of the cost. And to me, it looked like a one-year contract would perhaps be smarter with this cheaper group. And I just wondered if the staff could explain their choice of vendors. Mr. State Manager? Yes, I'll ask our Finance Administration Director, Brian Kidney, to shed some light on that. <clears throat> Good evening. Um, yes, we went um, out for proposals for investment uh, retirement um, advisory services. Uh, the uh, retirement plan advisors, they were the only ones that also included uh, uh, having an employee or one of their employees here on site to help with education for all of our employees. So um, the ones that were a bit lower, they were, they were just doing the, the advising for uh, the Investment Advisory Committee, which is within the Finance Department. Um, we'd also asked um, to also provide us 
what they would offer for advising our employees that participate in the 457 plan. And of those, we felt that RPA uh, was the best choice of them. So the reason this one's higher than the other one would be exactly that, is that they're also going to have uh, set up an education plan and um, pretty much an employee on site to help with uh, educating and advising our employees. So, okay, so that person, there would be some person here every week to advise our employees versus this Portland group that is just internet connection? Correct, correct. I see. And, and actually, I, um, Ms. Jill Woods back there, that, that's the actual person that would be doing that. Thank you very so much. I'm, uh, I do need to confirm. I don't believe it's, I don't believe the contract's every day. No, I said week, every so. week. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on item number one? Madam Mayor, I move approval of item one. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item number one passes. Council member DeLucy, 19730. Madam Mayor, 19730 is a resolution directing the city manager to delay execution of the contract for AMI until the initiative petition process has concluded. I have asked the staff to put this on our agenda because I am convinced that what we did on April 8 is in violation of the rules. And if I'm wrong, having this resolution doesn't hurt anything, and if I'm right, this does what this council wanted to do on April 8, and that's the reason for this resolution. I move re uh, approval of 19730. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, council member, there was a, I, I just, there, we've, there's been so many discussions about this topic that I want to make sure I'm understanding what this particular action was. My memory, my recollection was that a letter was submitted to me and I presume to the entire council from three council members asking for this to be delayed. So one of the council members, Councilman Van Camp, who had requested that in a letter made the motion last week and it was seconded and that was passed. I agree with you, there's no harm in passing this resolution, but I'm curious as to what the intent of the letter was if it was not to take action to move forward on that recommendation. I can tell you, Madam Mayor, the in, my intent in signing that letter was to put the item on the agenda properly. Under our rules, we cannot make formal motions to take action during a study session. Our rules do not allow it. The reason I wrote the letter and signed the letter was so that we could properly put the item on the agenda in the future to discuss it. I was concerned that the contract was on the city manager's desk. I wanted to say, hold it. Everybody's moving too quick. Here's my notice. Please, let's slow down. Okay. and I. Agree with that, and I voted in favor of the motion last week to delay this and let the petition process, um, run, you know, continue. But why did you not just write a resolution and submit it to the city clerk if that was what? I, I mean, why send a letter to the council and not prepare a resolution and ask the clerk to put it on the agenda? Madam Mayor, if I could. I believe introducing resolutions without notice is also a violation of the rules. I wanted a notice on the agenda. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members have? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? No. Lucy? Yes. Robertson? No. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. 
Resolution passes. Um, we have two public hearing, two full public hearings this evening. Um, before we proceed with these, um, the second is a full public hearing on Blue Valley Power Plant closure and purchase power agreement. As um, we all know, this is a very um, important decision uh, for our city. So we have done something a little bit out of the ordinary in having a full public hearing um, prior to the first reading. This public hearing will be continued to May 6th. So prior to the scheduled vote on May 6th, we will continue this full public hearing. If you wish to speak on this, um, you, in a public hearing, you are only allowed to speak on it one time. So you can speak on it this evening at the full public hearing, or you can speak on it on May 6th in the continuation of the full public hearing, but not both. So I just want to make that clear that this will be continued. Um, so you'll have an opportunity tonight and on May 6th to speak to the council before the vote. Um, our first public hearing is an application received from Star Fuel Centers, Inc., number 459, for an unlimited intoxicating liquor in the original package with Sunday sales license for the Star Fuel located at 17601 East 32nd Street South. This is a full public hearing. Ms. Eggers. Good evening, Council, Mayor. Um, Diane Egger, Assistant uh, Community Development Director. We uh, bring before you today for a uh, vote um, an application which uh, requires a two-third majority vote. Um, this is a new convenience store. The address for it is 17601 East 32nd Street South. Um, all the application meets all the requirements for the city's alcohol beverage code. Um, and it requires the two-thirds vote because it's within 300 feet of a city park. It backs up to a city park. Um, and I'm available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anybody present who wishes to speak in support of this application? Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Are there any comments or questions from the council? Okay, this public hearing is closed. Madam City Clerk. Council action is requested on the application received from Star Fuel Centers Incorporated for an unlimited intoxicating liquor in the original package with Sunday sales permit located at 17601 East 32nd Street South. This application requires a two-third majority vote for approval due to a park being within 300 feet of the establishment. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Bain Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Item passes. Our second public hearing is a full public hearing on the Blue Valley Power Plant closure and purchase power <sighs> agreement. If you are here to speak to the council regarding Blue Valley Power Plant closure and purchase power agreement, you may step forward. Okay. This public hearing, full public hearing will be continued till, to May 6th. Thanks for store second reading, Madam City Clerk. These next bills will receive their second reading and be considered by the council. Bill number 19-022, an ordinance authorizing a contract with Redford Construction Incorporated in the amount of $556,500 for the installation of pipe and water main on US 40 Highway from east of Nolan Road to west of Washington Avenue and at the intersection of James Downey Road and 23rd Street and authorizing future minor change orders not to exceed $55,650 and or time extensions. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 19-023, an ordinance vacating a portion of the right-of-way of West Charles Street. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Bain Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Ordinance passes. 
Bill number 19-024, an ordinance vacating an existing utility easement recorded at book 1954 and page 415 at the Jackson County Deed, Re Deed Records and located near 23rd Street and Lee Summit Road. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Ordinance passes. This takes us to our first readings, and we have one emergency. Is that what's correct? Yeah. Yes. One emergency um, ordinance this evening. Madam State Clerk. The next two bills receive their first reading tonight and their second reading at the next scheduled meeting on May 6th. Bill number 19 025. An ordinance authorizing execution of a certain transfer of property and improvements and assignment of easements agreement with the 39th Street Transportation Development District and authorizing, the, the, and authorizing and directing the city manager to do all things necessary to consummate the agreement between the parties. Bill number 19-026, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute on behalf of the City of Independence the capacity only power purchase agreement with Oneta Power LLC providing for the purchase of 46 megawatts of capacity only from the Oneta generating facility payable only from the revenues of the power and light operations and not from any tax revenues or general revenues this next bill is will be read as an emergency and considered by the council bill number 19-501 an ordinance finding determining and declaring the necessity of acquiring general utility easements permanent sidewalk easements and temporary construction easements for the College Street Improvements Phase 1 Project Number 7011805, authorizing the negotiation and eminent domain proceedings if necessary, approving the plans and specifications for the project, authorizing the use of experts as needed, authorizing and directing the execution of documents and the payment of funds to property owners or others holding property rights in conjunction with the project and declaring emergency. Bill number 19-501, an ordinance finding, determining, and declaring the necessity of acquiring general utility easements, permanent sidewalk easements, and temporary construction easements for the College Street Improvements Phase 1 project, number 7011805, authorizing the negotiation and imminent domain proceedings if necessary, approving the plans and specifications for the project, authorizing the use of experts as needed, authorizing and directing the execution of documents and the payment of funds to property owners, owners or others hold, holding property rights, in conjunction with the project and declaring emergency. Second and final reading. Is there a discussion on this bill? Madam Mayor. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. I would urge my colleagues to vote in favor for this. This is one step closer to using College Street as the demonstration project. Uh, we're moving good there. This is just part of it. So looking forward to seeing what this demonstration project looks like in its completion. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Robertson? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Ware? Yes. Ordinance passes. Uh, this takes us to council member comments. I'll start on my left with Councilman Van Camp. Uh, we had a chance tonight to take this to the people, the IAMI. I believe the petition will also do that. Fight the good fight. Councilman Robertson? No comments tonight. Councilmember DeLucy? I have two comments, Madam Mayor. Item number seven under for information only is notification to the rest of the council that we are on May 6th going to be discussing a possible amendment to our council rules of procedure. And it's a for information only item because that's the way the procedure rule says we have to do it. And the second thing is, Mr. City Manager, can you tell us anything new and exciting about 42nd Street and a broken culvert and maybe getting traffic moving down that street? I, I do have some updates. Um, as you recall last week during the stormwater sales tax presentation, the councilwoman had some questions about that and trying to get that project moving. I was able to visit with our city staff this week and get a better sense of that timeline. A um, couple of you know high level key updates. Um, we have went ahead and completed the surveying for that work. The report will come back this week. That will allow design to begin next week. Um, we're going to be able to design most, if not all of that in-house with the in-house expertise that we have. So over the last few years, we've um, beefed up our engineering staff. So we'll be able to do that in-house. That'll save us thousands of dollars uh, on that project. Um, 
we should be able to get that out for bid by the start of the new fiscal year. So the recommended budget, uh, here's a spoiler alert, will include recommended funding for that project. Early estimate for that is about $400,000. Um, we are going to compete for a stormwater grant, which if awarded in full would be about $124,000 to defray that cost. But at the end of the day, if there's no known surprises associated with this, it should be a simple removal and replacement of the culvert, job site restoration with the road, and should have that, again, if no surprises, reopened by the end of the year. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Council Member Huff. Mr. City Manager, how are we coming with the uh, service charge on these utility bills? Uh, good question. Um, had a discussion with uh, our uh, Assistant City Manager for Utilities, Mark Randall, today. Um, we have let uh, the vendor for that know that we're uh, exceptionally unhappy with what we um, are being assessed for that right now. Uh, the finance director that you heard from earlier dealt with this very same vendor during his tenure in Lawrence, so has uh, some experience um, um, working that issue for the ratepayers' benefit. Um, don't want to overpromise, but I believe there's some early indications that there's going to be, um, you know, it's, it's never going to be a free service, but a significant reduction in the cost that would be much more in line with what other uh, utilities and municipalities uh, are assessing. Um, they know where we stand on this. Um, I'm thankful for Brian, who's fought this fight before in another city, and I uh, think we're going to be successful to get something much more uh, alleviated and responsible for our ratepayers here. And we should have an answer for that within the week. Okay, I had one other thing. Um, and I don't know, I've been I've getting a few phone calls on uh, some people not getting their bills again. Did we have a mail issue or have you heard of anything about that? It's my understanding that our printer um, had some setbacks and that delayed the distribution of those, but um, um, we've rectified that and also have some accountability mechanism for that um, because of that issue. So we are working to get caught back up on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Perkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, last week, met with the uh, Chamber of Commerce. We are looking at to do our third annual citywide cleanup, and that is uh, something we've been doing. We've had some great success. We had several hundred um, individuals our first year. We had close to 300 last year. Hopefully, this year with a full room, you can get the word out that we're going to do that this year. We do not have any dates or time set up. We're meeting this Thursday. This is a great opportunity to, to continue the, the support that you have here with this. Let's get into our street ways and interest ways and, and let's start cleaning the city up. So as further details come about, I will definitely pass that on and let you know. We've got a great enthusiastic crowd here, so I'd love to see some of your faces on the sign-up list. Nothing tonight, thanks. Okay. Um, since the topic of boards and commissions came up this evening from one of our speakers, we did um, appoint three people to boards and commissions in our action tonight. We do have um, opportunities for boards and commissions and other volunteer service in the community. On Saturday, we had a very nice breakfast at the Truman Memorial Building for our city volunteers. Um, so, you know, those, and it was a little bit of a smaller crowd than we typically had, but it was a very, very nice turnout. Um, several council members along with our city manager and several department directors and other city staff are there to serve and, and interact with the citizens. So um, we give a report on boards and commissions um, every single month um, to let people know that we do have opportunities available. It's posted on our city website. If you go under boards and commissions, you'll see everything that's listed and where there are vacancies. I always encourage people, even if there's not currently a vacancy on a board or a commission that you'd like to serve on, please go ahead and submit an application anyway because someday there will be a, a vacancy. Um, some of those are individual council appointments. Um, so if you are interested in serving, um, please contact your council member and let them know. Um, we do, you know, really everything that we can to try to promote those opportunities. Um, and we'll continue to, to, you know, reach out to the community. So there certainly are um, lots of chances for you to be, to be involved. Um, and I encourage you to look at those. If you don't want to go on the city website, contact the city clerk and she can let you know 
the application process. Some of the boards and commissions we do conduct interviews for. Those are only the ones that are mandated um, by our city charter. Um, so I, I do um, invite all of you to put forward your names for consideration to serve on a board or commission. Yes. Madam Mayor, thank you. That reminds me, I do have one appointment that uh, for the stormwater uh, committee. If anybody would be interested in that, I would be more than happy to entertain and talk to you about that and see what we can do about placing you on that board. Manager, anything else this evening? Yes, Madam Mayor, two quick items. Um, in addition to the public hearing on the Blue Valley uh, Purchase Power Agreement uh, that's been continued to May 6th, there will also be an opportunity for a public hearing at the Public Utilities Advisory Board this Thursday that's at the Independence Utility Center. Um, so that is yet a, that would be a third opportunity for uh, citizens to have their voice heard on that matter. Um, the second item at your place tonight uh, is a monthly financial report. This is a charter mandated item um, that the city manager is to provide to the council. Um, our finance and administration department has been working very hard to revamp that document, uh, to modernize it, and to provide information that we believe is critical for the community and the council. Uh, comparison of revenues and expenditures, fund balance numbers for each and every single fund, the general fund, the utility funds, the special revenue funds, the TIF funds. Uh, there is a lot of fun in this report. So um, my ask would be that the council uh, review this. This will be published online tomorrow. If there is additional information that is not yet being captured in here, we want to make sure that that is of as much value as possible. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. We are adjourned.